Joining me now is Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger, the great state of Illinois. Congressman, thanks for taking the time this morning. <laughs> you bet. Thanks for having me. I, I, I want to get to the shutdown, but first I do want to ask you this BuzzFeed story. You're aware of the headline there that Trump personally instructed then-attorney Michael Cohen to lie to Congress about the Moscow Trump Tower project. Now, there's a big if there because uh, Mueller, of course, hasn't said this publicly and CNN and others have not confirmed it. But if the president were to instruct his lawyer to lie to Congress, in your view, would that be an impeachable offense? Yeah, I'm not going to go to that level. Um, obviously, it's concerning if it's true. And <clears throat> I was watching New Day this morning, and I know there's some concerns about the reporter. I'm not saying it's an incorrect story or it is, and it's it's sourced on anonymous sourcing. So I'll expect to hear more from Mueller or the Mueller report and can, as every member of Congress should, reserve judgment until we see the facts in their totality. So, uh, yeah, it's obviously very concerning, this accusation, but, you know, for a person like me to stand up and say whether it's impeachable or not impeachable or anything on any of these, frankly, before we have the totality of evidence, I think is is uh, frankly dangerous. Do, do you believe that if Mueller did have proof of that, that this is something that he should break out right now? In other words, show his cards today rather than wait until a final report? Yeah, I, you see, I don't, I don't know the kind of what a special counsel is supposed to do in terms of do they immediately release any kind of evidence that they're extremely concerned about or do they put it all in the totality of a report? This is all new to me. I've never been around with a special counsel. Mm. And, uh, and so I, I put a lot of, I guess, kind of faith in that process right now. And I think it seems like probably sooner than later, and I hope sooner than later, because this has gone on for quite a while, yeah. we get the totality of that report. And every member of Congress, as mm. an American, not as a Republican or Democrat, can see what's going on there. Let me ask you about the shutdown, because you voted along with your Democratic colleagues last week to reopen government. You've called the shutdown fight in the clear terms that you often use, Congressman. You've called it flat out stupid. As you know, GOP leadership is sticking with the president on this in both the House and in the Senate. Is that a mistake? No, I, I think the mistake is that nobody's talking. We have gotten into this. This is what's frustrating with me, if I can just you know, opine for a moment. We are about two weeks, three weeks into a new term. We're already thinking about the presidential election. We're already in re-election mode. And both sides, my side and the other side, are stuck in these positions that they're unwilling to come off of to get to a compromise solution. Compromise is not a dirty word. The whole country was founded on a compromise. Like, the whole Constitution was compromises, and it was made to develop it. So my advice is this. Dems have got to, Democrats have got to come off the point of well, we're never going to talk about a wall. Trust me, I've worked the border. Walls do work in certain areas. We've got to come off our demands and say, what is it that you guys want in this process? How is it that we can all work together? But right now, we're all in our corners. We're waiting for one side to completely capitulate and lose. That's what politics has become. And it breaks a system that was built for compromise, not for only winners and losers. You are an Afghan veteran uh, as a pilot. As you know, the president canceled at the very last minute uh, a, a CODEL to Afghanistan, Democratic members uh, of the party, uh, in retaliation. White House officials have said it was in retaliation for Nancy Pelosi's uh, request of the president to delay the State of the Union speech. Is that cancellation of a CODEL to visit troops deployed in war zones, is that a presidential decision or is it petty? I think it's. I think this is all petty. Um, you know, I wish if the president was going to cancel, maybe he should have done it quite earlier, so it wasn't the spectacle of one hour before. I also think the speaker probably should have canceled that on her own. I know I've been in other government shutdowns before and have had Codells and trips canceled because of that. I think you know, leaving even if it's a place like Afghanistan, which is important for her to go to, during a government shutdown is is not appropriate. But that said. Canceling the State of the Union speech was petty, initially citing security concerns and then saying, well, it's not a security concern, but we just make people work that they're not getting paid. They will be paid eventually. Secret Service, and by the way, it's the Capitol Police that actually secure the Capitol during a State of the Union, and they are being paid. This is all petty. I want all this to go away. I want all of us to just figure out how we can get to an agreement. You're gonna, it's going to be a win-win or a lose-lose. I don't care what you call it, but neither side is going to have a total loss, and it's time that we actually act like adults like the American people expect us to, yeah. and then we can look back and wonder what this whole 30-day shutdown was about, but mm -hmm. at least we got something people like. 30 days or 60 days or 90 days. Uh, who knows at this point? On Syria, you met with the president with a small group of lawmakers yesterday, specifically on Syria. 
as you well know, I don't have to remind you, we've just identified the soldiers, the U.S. soldiers who were killed in Syria uh, two days ago. Is, did the president's decision to withdraw from Syria, and there are their names there, uh, Jonathan Farmer, Shannon Kent, Scott Wirtz, is the president's decision to withdraw summarily from Syria, did that put U.S. forces, does it put U.S. forces in greater risk? I'm, you know, on this attack, I don't, I don't know the details of why this person did it. This was a member of ISIS who probably traveled from a different country to kill Americans and probably would have done it without this announcement anyway. I do think, though, when you announce that, you know, ISIS is defeated and we're leaving, that it is a boon to the recruiting efforts of ISIS. Uh, I, I think maybe if you say, look, we're going to shift our strategy to attack out of Iraq or whatever else that case may be, that's important. But this is a generational fight, Jim. This is what we don't talk about enough. It took 50 years to defeat the Soviet Union, and that was through a different kind of fight. That was through ideas. But that generation of people behind the Iron Curtain rejected the Iron Curtain. Right. That same thing is going to have to happen in terrorism. We have to be on the offense in the war, but we have to win the war of ideas, too. Let me ask you this. Brett McGurk, who until he resigned as a result of the Syria withdrawal, uh, recently has, a, he has an op-ed out today in the Washington Post that says that the decision uh, to, to leave, that Trump said he beat ISIS, instead he is giving it new life with this withdrawal. Agree. Yeah, I mean, I think when you say ISIS is defeated and they're not, it does give them new life. It's similar, to be fair, to the President uh, Obama's decision to leave Iraq in 2011. We saw a rejuvenation of al-Qaeda, which became ISIS. And so I agree with Mr. McGurk on this. Now, I will tell you my discussions with the President, and I don't want to reveal a lot of that because that's obviously in the Oval Office, but he is very pained by having to make this decision. He's, he's burdened by what the right thing to do is. That's obvious. And, uh, and I think he's very... Uh, cerebral and thinking about what the right thing is. He's just had a wrong voice in his head for a while in the name of Senator Rand Paul. You say he's, he's weighted down by it, but did you sense any wavering on that decision, any reconsideration? I mean, after all, his defense secretary I, you know, resigned I, again, over it. I, yeah, I, I don't want to go into, because I don't want to reveal, I think those are discussions that should happen in trust. Uh, I will say he wants to make the right decision. I will say Rand Paul, you know, continually saying things like enough war is enough. It doesn't understand that fighting terrorism is not a choice the United States has. It's just where we fight them is our choice. Um, I will say the president is, is, thinks hard about a lot of this stuff, and, and I'll say that to his, to his credit. Congressman Adam Kinzinger, thanks very much for joining us. You bet. Take care.